good morning and welcome to our service this morning. It's good to see everyone this morning. Would you stand with us as we sing, Because He Lives. to the service this morning uh, as we worship the Lord together. Uh, Pastor Brad and Linda uh, are wrapping up a vacation, and that leaves you with me. So uh, later in the service, uh, we'll be partaking or celebrating the Lord's Supper. Uh, you should have gotten the elements as you came in. Uh, if not, wave will get one to you. Uh, and if you've joined us by way of the Internet, Facebook live stream at the moment. Um, I invite you to grab some bread, a cookie, some cake, beverage of your choice, and join with us as we celebrate the Lord's Supper at the end of our service. 
The psalmist has said, let everything that has breath praise the Lord. In 1 Chronicles 23, we read, stand every morning to thank and praise the Lord and likewise at evening. So who'd like to be first to give praise to the Lord this morning? Brother Jim? Uh, it seems like the, uh, the virus has worked its way through our church and praise God, nobody was hospitalized. Mm -hmm. and, uh, you get what I mean? I can't talk to it. Okay? But I just praise God that He takes such good care of us. Because we had over 12 people that were sick, um, and none of them ended up in the hospital for an extended period of time. And I'm just so thankful that God takes care of us so well. I praise Him for that. Thank you, Brother Jim. Somebody else this morning? Over here? It amazes me how God takes care of us. We had a problem this week with our septic system, and it was going to cost $600. And lo and behold, I got a surprise check I wasn't expecting from unemployment for $630. <laughs> it is awesome. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Becky, your hand up. I have family in Louisiana. My boys went through the hurricane, but they're okay, and I thank the Lord for that. And praise the Lord. Somebody else this morning? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you for this opportunity that we have to gather in your house this morning. We are so thankful for the manifold blessings that you've bestowed on us, even in the diff different and difficult times in which we live. Father, I ask your blessing upon this worship service this morning. And we thank you and praise your glorious name. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Won't you stand with us as we sing, We Declare Your Majesty.
donate. It's good to have everybody back. Um, Paul the Apostle said in Philippians 1, to live is Christ and to die is gain. And he went on to say, he has chosen to know no one or anything save Jesus Christ. Praise God. I'll share an old song today that some of us know. You can hum along if you like.
Won't you stand with us as we sing, Open My Eyes That I May See. Thank you, praise team and Femi, for the music as you led us in worship this morning. Uh, before we begin, I just want to make a couple of announcements instead of doing it uh, at the end to, at, for this service. Uh, on the back table, you'll find a uh, paper nominating committee report and a proposed budget along with uh, the July financial statement. If you take one per family, Please, you'll be able to take a look at that uh, before our business meeting on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday morning, we'll restart our uh, Saturday morning Bible study. I'm, not, I'm sorry, we'll do the Wednesday morning Bible study on Wednesday morning, not Saturday morning. Uh, it'll take place here in the sanctuary uh, at 9 a.m. Uh, and then at 6.30 p.m. on Wednesday, we'll have our annual business meeting and it'll be held here in the sanctuary. Uh, ball team is, is playing uh, Friday night, 8 and 9 o'clock. I told the first service I didn't even know they were playing, but obviously they are. Um, so business meeting and Bible study on Wednesday, uh, the ball team on Friday night. Uh, it'll be a busy week. <coughs> Excuse me. As we begin this morning, uh, I'd like to share with you uh, a message entitled, He Changed Me, or He Opened the Eyes of My Heart. Uh, typically, when I speak uh, here, I, I don't make recommendations on uh, hymns that we'll be singing. Uh, but this week, I sent an email, uh, however late, uh, to the praise team and, and specifically requested, uh, Open Mine Eyes as the uh, call to worship. Uh, when I came in this morning, Cindy said to me, let me guess, you're going to preach to us this morning about opening our eyes. And I said, yes, 
that's what we used to call in law enforcement a clue. You would be correct. That is what we'll be speaking on. But uh, before we get into the message, uh, I'll share with you a concept on how to social distance in the local church in a COVID-19 world. The first is, Abraham was 100 years old when Isaac was born, and if he were here today, he would not be allowed to sit in this pew. Followed by a pew reserved only for Elijah. And then, remember when the Lord put a flaming sword at the entrance of the Garden of Eden so Adam and Eve couldn't go there? Flaming sword translates into blue tape, as you'll notice on that banner. Jesus said, take up my cross, not this pew. Jesus sat the 5,000 down in rows, just not this one. Zacchaeus climbed a sycamore tree to get a better view, and this pew wasn't it. You'll find me when you seek me, just not in this pew. Keep seeking. And my personal favorite, I have prepared a place for you, just not this pew. A special thank you to the Redeemer Presbyterian Church of New Orleans, Louisiana, who, uh, uh, for adding humor to social distancing and sharing it with us on Facebook. Psalm 119.18 says, Open my eyes that I might see wondrous things from you. This message started coming together in my mind actually on my birthday. Uh, as I was reading the daily bread for that day. It was a devotion entitled, He Changed Me. And the scripture text for it was Ezekiel 18, verses 27 and 28. And as you're turning there, let me give you some background to that. The commentary that followed that verse spoke of a man being sent to prison in London. He had been running a, a house of prostitution, and he thought there was nothing wrong with that, but he was found guilty and sent to prison. And while he was in prison, he decided to go to a Bible study, not for the sake of the Bible study, but because they were ser serving cake and coffee. But as he began to, to sing the first song, the Holy Spirit convicted his heart, and he began to, to weep. Later, someone gave him a Bible, and he read these words from Ezekiel 18, beginning in verse 27. If you'll stand with me as we read God's word, Ezekiel 18, verses 27 and 28. Again, when a wicked man turns away from the wickedness which he committed and does what is lawful and right... He preserves himself alive because he considers and turns away from all the transgressions which he committed. He shall surely live. He shall not die. May God richly add to the reading of his word, and you may be seated. Ezekiel wrote this passage to, the, to God's people while they were in exile. The people had turned away from God, uh, and as a result, the, the enemy came in, defeated them, carried them off into exile. But it was God's heart that he longed that they would repent, get a new heart, and a new spirit. The man I just told you about in prison in London repented of his sin and was changed. The eyes of his heart were opened. So as I read that devotion, it made me think of King Josiah. He was king of Judah, the southern kingdom, from 640 to 609 B.C. His great-grandfather, Hezekiah, had brought religious reform to Judah and had reopened the temple and removed idols. Unfortunately, his grandfather... Manasseh, his reign was one of unfaithfulness to Yahweh. Second Kings blames him for Judah's destruction and exile. 
Later, Manasseh was followed by his son, Amon, who was also an idolatrous king, as recorded in 2 Kings chapter 21 and 2 Chronicles chapter 33. So then comes Josiah, who comes to the throne at age eight. I can't get my mind wrapped around an eight-year-old being ruler of a country. But some commentators believe that he had influence or was influenced by a godly mother. In the eighth year of his reign, when he was 16 years old, uh, 648 BC, he tore down all the idolatrous high places of Canaanite worship. He tore down the Asherah poles of Baal worship and the altars of Baal. And so after four generations, he was finally worshiping God. He was worshiping Yahweh. And it was during this time that repairs were being made to the temple. People were coming and giving money and paying taxes. And at some point, uh, Josiah had the scribe take it down to the temple so the workers could be paid, supplies could be purchased. And while they were there, the high priest finds the temple, in the temple, the book of the law. Who knew? Why would the book of the law be in the temple? But they found it, and uh, the high priest gave it to the scribe, and the scribe took it back to the king, and uh, he read to Josiah the book of the law. And as a result, the eyes of Josiah, the eyes of his heart were open. And Josiah, we read, tore his clothing as in a sign of repentance. And to, to make a long story short, as a result, the people were gathered at the temple. The book of the law was read. And then Josiah made a covenant to follow the Lord, keep his commandments, his decrees, and his statutes. And all present pledged themselves to this covenant. And as a result of the eyes of his heart being open, the eyes of the people's hearts were open, and he had the abominations removed from all of Israel, all the, uh, the Asherah poles, the uh, altars to, to Baal, the high places, they were all destroyed. And once they were torn down, then they were burned. And he didn't just do it in the southern kingdom, he went back up to the northern kingdom and did the same thing there. You see, Josiah thought he was doing what was right in the eyes of the Lord, relying, I assume, on what he was told. Somebody had an influence on him to remove idols and begin worshiping in the temple. But that was not all that was required of him. But when the book of the law was read, the eyes of his heart were opened. If you jump forward five or six hundred years or so, we see where Jesus called 12 men to follow him. Just regular people, people like you and me. And for three years they went everywhere with him. He taught them, he taught them to pray, he prayed for them, he performed miracles, he turned water to wine. He caused the deaf to hear, the blind to see, the lame to walk. He cast out demons, and he raised the dead to life. And yet while those 12 acknowledged him as the Son of God, they really didn't understand. Even on the eve of his crucifixion, as they celebrated the Passover meal in that upper room, the 12 really didn't have a grasp of what Jesus was saying to them. It wouldn't be until three days later when Jesus rose from the grave and then on out at the day of Pentecost for the, for the group, for their eyes of their heart to be opened. And they finally understood. As I was preparing for today, I ran across a YouTube video. 
I'm still kind of amazed at how God works in all of this. So, I mean, on, on my birthday, I find this this uh, devotion that I thought this would make a good message. And then, as I'm doing preparation and surfing the internet, I run across this YouTube, and it all come together. It's a video of a very special young man. His name is Christopher Duffley. You may have heard of him. I hadn't until this past week. But he was born on in May of 2001 at 26 weeks. At birth, he weighed one pound, two ounces. He was blind and later determined to be autistic. His parents were addicted to drugs and Christopher was placed in foster care. When his paternal uh, aunt and uncle began wondering about him and searching for him, was he even, even alive? They were able finally to discover that he was in foster care and they adopted, adopted him as their own. And when Christopher was a toddler, they discovered he had perfect pitch. At age four, the family had gone on a mission trip and little Christopher walked up to the praise team and they handed him a microphone and he began singing. Watch with me the video of Christopher Duffley recorded in 2012 at age 11, blind and autistic, singing Open the Eyes of My Heart at a church in Plano, Texas.
open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Wasn't that amazing? Last time I looked, there had been 33 million, 300,000, 361 views of this one particular video. And I can't get the tune out of my head. Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. I want to see you. Christopher Duffley is proof that even though blind or autistic or any other disability we might have, or for that matter, for any disability we may not have, we have a gift with so much to offer. Of those 33 million views, I'll have to admit that I might have a hundred or so of those myself, so those numbers might be a little jilted. But look at us. The year 2020 has been a roller coaster ride. And I don't like roller coasters. We live in a world with a pandemic the likes of which hasn't been seen in over a hundred years. This morning, we are social distanced here in church. And some, out of a preponderance of caution, still stay home and watch and worship via the internet. And how thankful I am that we have that technology today, that people can stay at home safely, worship the Lord with their church family, and something they didn't have a hundred years ago. Unfortunately, we live in a world of misinformation, thanks in large part to social media. Uh, I think Jim Paul just posted something. I'll be with you in a, in a moment there. Everything goes to our phone or our computer, and we get our information and our news from social media, and we become a... Uh, a divisive nation. People have seemingly lost the ability to agreeably disagree. I've shared with you before my story, growing up in church, walking an aisle, making a profession of faith, and believing all was well with my soul. And it wasn't until some years later that the Lord opened the eyes of my heart and a personal relationship began. It was at that moment that he changed me. Too often I fear we, we might be like Josiah was, thinking we are doing and worshiping uh, in a manner pleasing to God until at some point we find that we are not. See, Josiah was worshiping God in the temple and thought all was well, but there was still Asherah poles and there was still uh, altars to, to Baal and, and others uh, that was going on. It wasn't in the temple, but it was outside the church. And it wasn't until the eyes of his heart were opened after the reading of the book of the law that he realized that he needed to make a change. And I would submit to you that there, we may need the eyes of our heart opened on more than one occasion in our lifetimes. The eyes of my heart were open and I had a personal relationship beginning with Jesus Christ and it was some years later that the eyes of my heart were once again opened up with a call to missions. In a moment, we'll be celebrating the Lord's Supper. <clears throat> a 
as I was making preparation last night, I got an email from a friend, uh, and in his email he wrote these words, the world is in a mess. Thanks be to God, we know the one who is the Prince of Peace. He makes new creations out of messes. Amen? Father, we thank you that because of what Jesus accomplished on the cross, we can be a new creation. Forgive me. Father, forgive us for the times that we might have turned to the old things of the world, to the gloom and despair portrayed by the media and the world. Father, I pray that you open the eyes of our hearts so that we might see you high and lifted up, shining in all your glory. For you are indeed holy, and we need to see you. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. As we transition to that portion of our service where we'll celebrate the Lord's Supper together, there are several places in Scripture where the writer mentions the importance of taking a good look at ourselves to find out what's not right to find out what's not God honoring. The psalmist prayed, search me, God, and know my heart. See if there is any offensive way in me. Jeremiah wrote, let us examine our ways and test them and let us return to the Lord. And Paul speaking of our heart condition at the time of communion or the Lord's Supper said, everyone ought to examine themselves. So the music's going to play again softly and we I would ask that you join me as we examine our hearts and know that the altar is open if you care to do business with the Lord. But may your prayer be that the eyes of your heart be open, that your heart's desire is that you want to see him. See him high and lifted up, shining in all of his glory, because he is holy. And I want to see him. If you'd look this way, the Passover meal that Jesus shared with his disciples on the eve of his crucifixion was later has later come to be known as the Lord's Supper or Communion. And it's a significant event 
in the life of the church. Both Matthew and Mark records the events in their gospel. Uh, Luke also records it. Luke simply reverses the order of the the uh, cup and the and the bread. And Paul follows the example example of Matthew and Mark, and and prefaces his instructions in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, with these words, For I received from the Lord what I also delivered to you. And at that meal, Jesus took the bread and he gave thanks. Father, we thank you that you have given us a remembrance of the sacrifice of the brokenness of your body as you took our sins to the cross of Calvary. Father, we thank you for for that. We thank you for your sacrifice. And we pray it in his name. Amen. And after he had prayed... He had broken the bread, and it was passed down the table. Let's partake of the bread together. And then in the same manner, he also took the cup after supper. And he filled the cup. And he said, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Matthew also records Jesus saying that his blood was shed for the remission of sin. And Father, we thank you uh, for that ultimate sacrifice. Not only was your body broken, but your blood was shed for the remission of our sin. And we give you thanks for that, and we give remembrance to you for those acts. And we pray it in your name. Amen. Let's partake of the cup together. Father, I thank you for our time together this morning. Especially thankful for the opportunity to once again remember your sacrifice as we have just participated here in the Lord's Supper. A remembrance going forward of your sacrifice and of your promise to us. In spite of what's happening in the world, may we always test positive for faith. Help us to keep our distance from doubt. Father, isolate us from fear and through it all. May our trust be only in you. And we pray it in Jesus' name for his sake. Thank you for being here this morning, and uh, as you leave, stay safe, stay healthy, and hopefully we'll see you again on Wednesday evening.